Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee, having my coffee this morning, and uh, getting my fire going here, starting my day, and uh, I've had people um, ask me questions recently here, and I've had these questions in the past before, and I wanted to do a couple of videos answering these questions, at least from my perspective. And uh, the first question that I'm going to tackle here is, how do I get my spouse... Um, or significant other involved in prepping. They're not interested in it. You know, they get on me because I'm a prepper. <clears throat> and uh, this goes for sort of spouses, in uh, my opinion, and it also goes for basically non-prepping um, people, people who aren't into preparedness. And uh, over my experience, it boils down to two things. Um, one, be right. And two be yourself. And uh, the term nowadays that people like to use is you do you. Um, I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit. Um, being right. Now, my wife um, isn't really a prepper. And uh, she's more of a prepper now than she was years ago. But she basically wasn't a prepper. And she sort of just let me do um, my thing to a certain extent. Um, but there were times years ago where she didn't like what I was doing. And uh, the one that I'm going to get to here is uh, one that we can all relate to and we all seen, and it's the toilet paper thing. I would, uh, you know, buy extra toilet paper when um, on payday or whenever I had a little spare money and uh, put it up. And uh, there were lots of times I got chastised for that. She chastised me and she said... Why are you buying so much toilet paper? Why do you have this toilet paper? We don't need any of that. We could spend the money on something else. And I said, my reasoning behind it at the time was, is most people in uh, North America have never wiped their backside with anything but toilet paper. And uh, if something happens, they're not going to basically even know what to use other than toilet paper. So I can foresee toilet paper being one of the first things that's going to go if there's any type of panic. And unfortunately, I was right. And uh, when you're right, um, you don't want to gloat on things. You just want to move on. Because what's going to happen is, is the more times that you're correct, um, people aren't going to admit, and they're, they're not going to walk up to you. At least very few people walk up to you and they'll say, well, you know what, you were right about that. They're, they're not going to want to do that. That's not how the human mind and the, the human ego works. Um, but what I found out over the years, the more times you're right, the more often people are going to start coming to you for advice. They're going to ask you, you know, how to, how to handle this situation, how to handle that situation. I'll give you another example. This goes back to the beginning of the pandemic. <clears throat> and uh, we're talking the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020, before March of 2020. I said this to different people before. I said, hey, I said, uh, you know, this has the potential of being serious. I think, you know, you guys should, uh, you know, make preparations for such an event. And I got called a lot of names. I got called fear monger, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, you're not really a prepper unless you've been called fear monger. And uh, it's sort of a badge of honor, I guess. But then a couple weeks later, the store counters were shipped bare. Everything was locked down, shipping ceased people were waiting in line to get into the big box stores again i was right and nobody ever came up to me and said hey you know you were right about that whole pandemic situation and i don't expect them to but again more and more people started coming to me for advice they'd say well how do i handle this how do i handle that i'll give you another example Back in uh, 2011, when we uh, we got a generator here for the house, we had a power outage. I said, you know what? There's problems. I see problems with the uh, you know power distribution network. I don't see them going around fixing and replacing poles and replacing wires and stuff. That's you know looks like it's about ready to fall down now. I'm pretty sure they're not going to fix anything. I said, I think we should have a generator here to run basic stuff. I had people tell me then, man, what do you want a generator for? Why are you spending that kind of money? We don't have that. Why are you spending that kind of money? We don't have that. You know, we don't um, have that many power outages around here. I didn't. I didn't listen to them. I just said, well, I want a generator. 
We want to take some time and take some money to get that stuff around. Can't do it all at once. Got to do it piecemeal. And I was myself. I did me. And uh, got our generator. Took a, you know, a year or so for us to get everything hooked up and pay for everything. And uh, now we got a pretty good sized portable generator here where we can you know, run the power for a few days, maybe even a few weeks if the power goes out. Well, then as time marched on, four years, five years, six years down the road, we started having more and more and more power outages. Now I drive around the neighborhood and I see on pretty much every other house, I see a Generac. Did anybody ever come back and tell me, hey, you were right about that generator thing? No, but is everybody buying a generator now? Yes. So again, I was right. And every time you're right about a situation like that, you boost your credibility. Until finally, people can't argue with it anymore. And uh, that is my advice to people who have spouses that um, aren't into preparedness. Be yourself. Continue to prep. Don't listen to them. Do your thing. Do your... Uh, you know, buy your extra cans of food or, you know, when it's canning season, do your canning. If you see a weakness in something, explain, I think this is a weakness. I'm going to do this to prepare for it. Don't gloat about it, whatever. But eventually, they're not going to be able to deny it anymore. And there's a negative side effect to this, too. You're going to be known as the bearer of bad news because you're going to be right about bad things. And people don't like that sometimes. Um, and that's just their, their fear response kicking in. But there's just been lots of situations like that that I've seen over the years. You, if a person just continues, they just do their thing. They see where there's a holes in different um, systems and whatnot. And they plug those holes with different physical items that they buy or skills or whatever. Eventually, you're going to start building up a credibility. You're going to build up credibility in your family. You're going to start building up credibility with your neighbors. You're going to start building up credibility with your community. And you're going to be known as you know the person that kind of has a handle on things and uh, like I said you don't want to gloat and you don't want to say tell people hey I was right about that you don't you want to be like that you want to you know want you want to put the ego in the back pocket and you just want to continue forward because you want everybody to be, be be prepared you want a prepared family you want your neighbors to be prepared you want your community to be prepared because if something happens the more people that are prepared, the more solid and the better off your community is going to be in a whole. So that is uh, that is my advice As for people that have you know non-prepping spouses and stuff. Be right and continue to be yourself and you continue to do what you need to do to get uh, to get your things squared around. Like I said, you're gonna get you're gonna get a little bit of grief until bad things start to happen. And when bad things start to happen, hopefully, God forbid, they're not too bad that uh, causes major, major problems. But the more times that you're right, you're going to build that credibility and eventually nobody's going to question what you're doing. And that's basically the end game of it. But anyway, wanted to uh, do this video and discuss uh, basically how to get people into preparedness, whether they're spouses or they're just other uh, other folks that uh, are skeptical of the whole preparedness lifestyle. And it is a lifestyle. Once you start getting into it, you live a certain way. You don't live the way you did before when, you, when you're serious about preparedness. But anyway, this is Modern Refugee. Appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope you guys got a little information, a little entertainment out of this video. Something to think about just sharing, you know, what I do to get people on board with our preparedness and how I've uh, gotten my wife onto preparedness over the years. Anyway, you guys take care.